I am Alex Avila. I'm a PhD candidate at Oregon State University and I study fisheries and we are at Hatfield Marine Science Center. So I grew up in Ecuador. The cool thing about where I lived is that it was in the mountains but right between the jungle and the coast and we would go often to the coast on vacations and whenever we had a chance. And I would love watch the fishermen come in and bring in all their loot and see what was what. So like seahorses and octopus and fish and sometimes shark there and then they would give them to me and I can throw them back in the ocean. That was fun. I remember like seeing there's a lot of unfortunately pollution on the ocean. So trying to help take care of the ocean is what I wanted to do when I was growing up. When I started interviewing for a position here at OSU as a grad student, they asked me to write a proposal on rockfish uh, coming from the East Coast there rockfish or something different. <laughs> and I was like, wait, 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 striped bass? No, no, okay, no, rockfish are a specific group of fish over here. Uh, and I started learning about rockfish and uh, it turned out they're really cool. There's so many diverse species that come out from that group. So I think there's like 94. It keeps changing because we keep discovering that, oh, it's not one species, it's two. And the cool thing is that they're very different than other fish that I've worked with before, that, even though they are commercially important. I was specifically asked to look at genetics. And so looking at genetics of rockfish and then trying to figure out which species. Um, and so I'm looking at the genetic connectivity of China rockfish between Oregon and Washington. So the cool thing about rockfish is that they gave birth to live young. So that means that they don't lay eggs like other fish do, but they release baby fish that are sw have swimming abilities, so into the current. So when they're first born, they might not have the ability to swim against the current, but when they get older, they do. And so the ocean currents might affect how far away they go or how close to home they stay. So that's one of the questions I'm seeking to answer with my research specifically on China rockfish. Looking at the connectivity, we were expecting to find an Oregon population and a Washington population. That was one of the theories, or either one big population that's all connected. Based on these genetic sequences, we see that there's not an Oregon-Washington divide and it's not one big population. There are two populations, but they're simultaneously both in Oregon and in Washington, which is curveball, plot twist. <laughs> um, not expected. So currently they group all the rockfish together in ground fish, and so if one species of rockfish has a slightly different life history than the majority that's made the decision with, then it might need to be managed in a different way and it might, sh should not be maybe grouped with all the other ones in terms of doing maybe estimates or how much we can catch. For, for management decisions, it might affect how much we can take or keep, basically, from the fish that we catch. The goals of a scientist, a fishery scientist or a marine scientist in general, should be similar to goals of a fisherman where a fishery scientist wants to ensure a sustainable fishery for a long period of time to make sure that the next generation can fish and the generation after that and so on and so forth. And a fisherman wants to also be able to fish for many years from now and maybe have their kids fish or maybe just be able to eat what you grew up with, whatever fish that is, it's the same goal. A great example actually is right here in Newport, we have the scientific community here at Hatfield working side by side with fishermen asking like, hey, what do you need to know about the ocean? And in some cases they say, hey, I wanna know where the temperature changes and the oceanographer people created an app that shows them where the temperature line is so they can go fish a specific fish. Um, and if you ever with these fishers for rockfish specifically, and you say, hey, I want you to fish whatever species of rockfish you want, they know where to go to go catch that fish. It's amazing like how well they know. And so it's taking in all these collective knowledge and working together. And so Oregon is really great at that, working with communities, working with fishers, working with other stakeholders, the managers, the scientists, and putting it all together into one big picture. And so the whole point of this is to have a more holistic, encompassing view of the ocean, of its ecosystem, people that depend on those resources to manage it in a more sustainable manner, ensuring that we can still have these fish for many, many generations.